December meeting of the Redevelopment Commission Commission's in order. Take a roll call, please. Mike Hanna, present. Lynn Mellon, present. Craig Campbell, present. Steve Denny, present. Dave Craig is present. Excellent. We have a quorum, which is good news. Approval of the last meeting minutes, November meeting minutes. Anybody have any questions or comments or changes to make to those? Have you had a chance to look at them? Everybody good? Did I get a uh, motion to accept the minutes as written? I'll make a motion that we second. approve the minutes. We go to second from Lynn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the meeting minutes from the last meeting are approved. Old business here. Uh, well, first I'd like to, I know Rob did a good job introducing himself to everybody, but Rob is our now our town attorney. So this is first RDC meeting. Happy to have them all board. Um, Welcome. Up. Yeah, thank you. Um, we, do, we don't have anything different. We had that was a placeholder as far as the the trail. So unless anybody's got some questions, we can move on to the, the main show tonight. Any questions over the last the business trail? Sounds like we're good. Okay. Um, New business. Well, new business is the annual report that's required to be done, and Brady uh, Group is our uh, financial advisor, and Matt Frischi handles uh, this sort of thing, and also some of the bond uh, stuff for us. So Matt put together the annual report, and it's a breakdown of basically what the revenues and expenditures are expected to be. Well, mostly what the revenues are supposed to be. Um, so, Matt, with that, I'll let you take over. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Uh, as Scott mentioned, Matt Frischi, Reedy Financial Group. Pleasure to see you guys all again. Um, tonight, I'm here before you to complete your guys' final reporting requirement for the year, your TIF impact. Uh, we have invited all overlapping units that your TIF impacts to attend this meeting uh, and present to them essentially what is the impact of you guys having a TIF on them. Okay. Uh, so, without further ado, we'll, we'll go ahead and proceed through the presentation. So, First page, really just once again, a, a kind of a, um, a visual representation of all the different reporting requirements that you guys are subject to on an annual basis. Like I said, this will be satisfying that final reporting requirement. Uh, we're, we're required prior to December 31st to present all, what is our TIF impact to those overlapping units. And you'll see the various different components that are included within this report. Um, some financial data and budgets, long-term TIF plans, kind of what projects are we working on? What do we expect in the future? And then uh, get to the, the meat and potatoes of this presentation, which would be a discussion on the TIF impact and specific impact to each overlapping unit. So on the first page, or sorry, second page, um, if you want to scroll down. Uh, this page really just breaks down your guys' allocation areas that, uh, that are underneath the purview of Pendleton RDC. Uh, you'll see you'll see the four um, main areas there. Now, I know we did create a new area uh, for the Serenity TIF that is not included on this report because there is no assessed value currently captured within that area. You'll see the creation years. They're expected uh, expiration years based on our interpretation, interpretation of the statute at the time of, time of establishment. Uh, that is that is subject to legal interpretation on that exact um, expiration date, but that's what we you know we deal with these all the time. So that's generally what we assume and see as far as expiration years based on when those uh, areas were established. You'll see the incremental assessed value that we're capturing in those TIF allocation areas for this year, um, bringing us to a total TIF AV captured of fifty six million four hundred five thousand nine hundred twenty five dollars. On the next slide, I, I like to include this slide just as a uh, refresher kind of on how TIF works. Uh, and really, it, with the concept of TIF impact, it, it's always good to remind people that when we create a TIF allocation area, whatever that assessed value is at the time of creation, that's not something that we're taking from any overlapping units. That, that value is set, correct? And, and that continues to go to those base overlapping units in the form of their base assessed value. What we capture in the form of TIF or incremental assessed value is new development on those parcels within our TIF that occurs after the creation of the TIF. Um, so key there is we're not taking away any value. We are only capturing new assessed value that then drives our TIF revenues that then we turn around and use those TIF revenues for uh, the redevelopment of our community and the benefit of all the overlapping units. 
At the time of expiration, all that assessed value will then flow back into the base to all of those overlapping units. Uh, and essentially what it will do is it will create a tax rate decrease. So really, if anything, uh, the, the, the main impact to TIF is that we are we are keeping our, our tax rate somewhat artificially higher just because we're capturing that, that incremental assessed value within a TIF as opposed to outside a TIF that, that impacts the base and the tax rate. On the next slide, you'll see your, your guys' two main funds, your TIF fund, um, that all those allocation areas, those TIF revenues flow into, and then your savings fund. So you'll see at the beginning your fund balances, the revenues that are projected for the year. Um, obviously, we have, we have not uh, captured all of that revenue yet this year. Uh, we will once we receive our December settlement, and then our anticipated expenditures uh, for the year, and then our end-of-year fund balance. Next slide just kind of outlines what are some current ongoing projects that we're, we're using these TIF revenues for and what are some potential future plans that we have on the horizon that we want to take a look at um, and kind of analyze as far as how we want to fund those. So uh, you'll see the, the amphitheaters on here, the Tyler Martin easement, town hall repairs. As far as future plans, I know there's some, some discussions going on that would contemplate giving some updates to the pool and then also the soccer fields. And then obviously utility improvements is always a big use of TIF. So uh, those are always in the horizon. All right, so on this next slide, really, um, I won't read word for word from here, but essentially what we have to do when quantifying what is our TIF impact to overlapping units, we have to enter into a hypothetical scenario where we say what would happen if we released all of our TIF assessed value tomorrow. OK, and we do that by assuming that you guys never used TIF in the first place. No TIF allocation areas were ever established. And also assuming, and this is the big key point, that all of that development that is within our TIF allocation area would have occurred otherwise without the use of TIF. Right. We, I mean, we have ample opportunity or ample exam or ample examples uh, that show us that TIF is one of the reasons why a lot of these developments even came to town, Serenity TIF is a perfect example for you guys recently, right? We had to incentivize that development to come to town. And we did so in the form of working with them with the share of the TIF, right? In the form of that economic development bond that we issued earlier this year. So all that to say, we have to assume in this scenario that all of those developments would have occurred regardless of the use of TIF. And what would happen if we released all that assessed value? The other things that go into this TIF impacts concept is really we have to have a good understanding of how property taxes work in the state of Indiana. Um, you know, when it comes to determining what revenues are available to a community, uh, you typically have most municipalities, uh, and I say most, some municipalities will not have all of these, but for the most part, all the communities within Madison County have a maximum levy. That That is a fact. Uh, and maximum levy is essentially how we drive our what what drives our tax rate and what drives our revenues, okay? So if you think about the equation, you know, you have your assessed value um, divided by 100, divided by levy, that gives us our tax rate, all right? Um, our levy is capped. In the state of Indiana, we are only allowed to grow our annual levy, our annual maximum levy by a state-approved growth quotient. For instance, from this year to next year, that, that amount is 4%, okay? Um, so that AV divided by 100 divided by levy equals our tax rate. What that means, because levy is constrained, doesn't matter if your AV goes up by 10%, your levy can still only go up by 4%. All that would mean if you dropped in 10% of new assessed value, all that would mean is your tax rate would decrease. There's no additional dollars necessarily that are generated. We can't raise our levy by 5%. The state tells us we can only grow by 4 So that's the max levy piece side of things. And then the other type of fund that some municipalities and really uh, in your guys' instance, it'd only be the county and the town uh, that would have this type of fund, which is a rate driven fund. And that rather than being a levy fund, it is a rate driven fund. So you have a specific rate for that fund as assessed value fluctuates, that will impact the amount of revenue that that fund would receive. Uh, if there's more AV, if it's a five cent rate, which is for the town of Pendleton, your maximum CCD, which is your rate driven fund, your maximum rate is five cents. So if you have a five cent rate, larger AV, it would, would equate to more dollars, okay? Uh, just wanted to outline kind of how that works before we go into really the next slide that breaks down these dollars and cents and kind of what is the impact for us. So you'll see 
what we did here is we said, once again, let's assume all this development would have occurred. Let's assume that you would never would have used TIF and all that TIF AV were to be released tomorrow. What would happen to uh, property taxes and revenue collections in the in these overlapping communities? So you'll see we've broken this down, as I said before, circuit breaker impact and rate-driven fund impact. That rate-driven fund, that would be that, that CCD rate. Um, like I said, for a town or, or, or city, that rate is capped at five cents. For a county, it's capped at three and a third cents. So if you drop in AV, you're going to get more dollars on those rate-driven funds. However, the circuit breaker impact, that's a result of that tax rate being slightly higher. Okay. It's not necessarily, those are not necessarily dollars that would be received from communities. It would just be that is their circuit breaker impact, how much that circuit breaker impact would decrease because your your rate went down. If you think about it, you know, just in general, simple terms. Uh, if we say that a, a, a $100,000 home, right, it, it, you guys know, know the concept of circuit breaker, single family homeowners are capped at 1%, right? So if we have a $100,000 home, let's just say I'm, I'm using this for example purposes, that our tax rate is $1.50. Technically, that tax liability is $1,500. Well, they're capped at 1%. So the max they can pay is $1,000. So that means that that $500 that is above the amount that they're allowed to pay is circuit breaker. If you reduce the rate, let's just say it now becomes 1.2, now their tax liability is 1,200, but they're still capped at 1%. So that, that was a reduction in the circuit breaker loss that that community is receiving on that one parcel, just as an example. So the, the big, big difference here is that is circuit breaker impact. That's not necessarily more dollars in dollar for dollar what they're going to receive if your TIP was released. The other thing we like to, to do in this example is show not only what is the impact, but what's that impact in re relation to the, those overlapping units budget? Because, you know, to Joe Smith and, and to me, $631,000 is quite a bit. But when you compare it to their overall budget, you'll see that those numbers are, are quite low compared to their total overall budget, right? For the town, obviously, we have the biggest impact because the town has a direct correlation to the RDC. And you guys get the benefit of the RDC. You get to appoint members to the RDC. So, uh, you'll see that our our impact there is forty eight percent of the total overall impact as a as a you know in, in relation to our budget it's six point five percent roughly. So for the school corporation, our TIF only costs like is that the way to put it only point six seven percent of their budget. of their budget yes. So if you release all that AV. Once again, their circuit breaker impact would go down three hundred sixty-five thousand four hundred seventy-eight dollars. They they would they would be able to capture a higher percent of the levy that they have, um, and that is like a very that these numbers are conservative in nature. We assume that if a bucket is above the circuit breaker amount, we're going to just be conservative and assume that all that revenue would be received in the form of circuit breaker. However, a lot of times that wouldn't be the case. So would they collect 365,000 more of their levy? No, um, but but that is the impact and that we have to figure out some way to quantify it. And that's just the, the way that we have developed to quantify that. So if you add up all those impacts, you'll see um, circuit breaker impact for those overlapping units, $1,256,888. Those rate driven fund impacts, like I said, only the town and the county are impacted in this scenario. $46,422, bringing us to a total impact of $1,303,310. Alternatively, because you guys have that assessed value within a TIF allocation area, you guys are able to collect in 2024 $1,539,638. That is $236,328 more than that impact is, right? So what we call that is our TIF margin which is 15 cents in this case, which means that for every dollar you guys receive in the form of TIF revenues, 15 cents of that dollar would never have existed if not for the use of TIF. Uh, so you guys are getting more than the impact ever is. And then the other benefit here is, once again, our, our whole goal is to capture this assessed value, utilize these dollars to redevelop our community, make it a better place, attract more businesses, attract more residents. And then at the end of the day, when the TIF expires, that assessed value will flow through to the base, ultimately lowering the tax base and benefiting all those overlapping units in the form of larger circuit breaker decreases or larger, lesser circuit breaker impacts, I should say. Um, 
So you can flip on to the next slide. Really, this is just a kind of a, a word explanation of what I just gave you, okay? Uh, so once again, RDC FIP margin 15 cents. Um, and then you'll see the numbers that we outlined on the prior slide as far as what is the impacts, how much revenue are we receiving versus what is our impact, and then how much more additional revenues are we receiving because of the use of TIF. So once again, uh, I, I think the, the whole goal of TIF, right? Attract residents, attract businesses, re revitalize, focus on quality of life. Uh, as long as you guys are, are, are doing the things that you should be doing, which you are, um, we're making an impact on the community that we're harboring this assessed value, ultimately going to pass it through at the expiration of our TIF. Um, and, and that is the TIF margin concept and the TIF impact concept. So I can answer any questions you guys may have. I think that pretty much wraps us up as far as the presentation. Quick question. Tom. Yes, sir. I'm not sure which slide it was. Four, maybe, or the financial position. Maybe Scott can help with this. What are... Do we know what our expenditures are from the TIF fund? For 24. Just in general, is that what you went over with yeah, your, that's what your we're budget? The last meeting with, with the budget. Okay. Yeah, if you want to test my memory, I will say that. Spin, the spending yeah. plan? Is that what you guys are yeah, referring to for, for next year? Yeah. Yeah. I'm and, just curious. That was, that was the budget you showed. Okay. Yeah. It, it, so this, a, is, this is a new requirement by the legislature to present this type of this uh, this actually came about, I believe, uh, if my memory serves, and I think it was passed in legislation in 2018, I want to say. Uh, so a year after that, 2019, I think was our first year that we did this TIF impact, if I'm not mistaken. The spending plan is the new one that that this is the first year for that reporting requirement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I got it. Last year, there was legislation that was presented at the State House about affecting TIF, TIF revenues for local government. Do you see that getting traction this year at the State House? You know, it's hard to say. Um, th there's always, it seems like it's a it's a pendulum, right? You know, one year it's negative TIF, uh, TIF legislation, the next it's positive, and, and you we're always going to hear some, probably. Uh, I will say, like I said, that the that legislation was just passed that made us do a new reporting requirement, right? It was kind of a, a goal to do increased transparency. Um, to say, no, there won't be, I can't sit here and say that. I think it's something that we closely look at and I know that we're constantly looking at what is potential negative or positive legislation that is coming down the pike. And we'll bring that to you guys. And I know we we pass those along as far as, hey, look out for this. Or well, we were the concerns that, that they, they was trying to do away with the TIF for local government and stuff, which would affect the development and what we're trying to do with the TIF and why we have a TIF. Yeah. And one, that's how it originally was presented. Uh, I was just wondering if there was any gaining more traction. It was presented last year. I, th I think I think the legislators realize that this is a very important tool for you guys yeah, um, because sure. you use it a lot and, and it is one of your best quivers in, in a municipality's uh, or sorry, one of your best arrows in a municipality's quiver uh, for redevelopment and for you know benefiting your community. Um, so I, I don't think that there'd be any legislation that would kind of, you know, cut us off. And also, too, we have outstanding bond obligations or debt obligations. They can't do anything to affect those revenues, right? Yeah. Bondholders would throw a fit, uh, just, just wouldn't happen. Yeah. I think one of the big things that I'm keeping my out, eye out for is that, you know, th this personal property um, reduction of the floor legislation sure. keeps coming up, and right? And, and that would be, you know, th that would, wouldn't be good for TIF, right? Yeah. Like personal property we captured in a TIF, and, and once again, those are used for repayment of our bonds. So uh, I, I don't see how that they can get that through without getting a defined plan for how they replace that revenue. And that's what happened with House Bill 1001 with property tax caps to begin with. They was mostly streamed revenue to replace for schools and public safety and this and that, and it never got really finished at all. I know it's with a $236,000 increase in collection. That's about 18%. That's a lot. That's pretty impactful and pretty positive for the TIP fund to increase 18% between two and 36,000. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Pretty positive. Yep. No, it gives are going great. So, Dave, I think the thing that's under the biggest threat is remember the expiration for that TIF area. I know that's on the current. Doesn't the clock that it expires in 25 years, the clock doesn't start unless you have a bond against that area. Yeah, current legislation uh, yeah. is once you create a TIF allocation area, the expiration doesn't begin until you have debt obligated right. payable by those revenues. So, so what are the um, sure. so the loophole that everybody sort of turns a blind eye to is they've never 
said, well, you get revenue from it, but you don't have a bond on it, that can go on forever, right? And so everybody's just sort of ignored that loophole because everybody likes it. Uh, sure, sure. It's the game we play, right? That's There's always cool. loopholes and that's, things that's, that you can... That's the biggest threat as far as changing what we have. And I think they tried so many different paths with that expiration during the, you know, the early 2000s that, it, and that's why, you know, you'll see uh, different expirations on those allocation area funds based on when they're established because they did change so frequently in those early 2000 yeah, time frame. Yeah, go back to that slide, I think. Uh, uh, go up. Yeah. Yep. I think it's like the second or third. Yeah, oh, there you go. Yep. So, yeah, so... So the expansion's TBD because there's not specifically something payable by that expansion area. Um, whereas the, the Pendleton TIF area, we have debt outstanding. Um, and based on when that debt was outstanding and based on that creation year, that's why that expiration is projected at 2029 for right now. Thank you. My pleasure. Any other questions? Thank you, man. Yeah, my Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Appreciate your help. That's all we have. Is that it? Yeah, I mean, it's, this was required by state laws. There it is. It's a little bit different than what we've done in the past. All right, anybody it's got the, anything else we need to discuss? That's right. Mike? William? No. Anything else? All right. Question from the floor. Yes, sir. The, uh, I'm looking at that, the chip allocation funding. There's a lot of improvement, but there's no funding for the downtown, downtown improvement. For example, Franklin, the city of Franklin, mm -hmm. they use the chip money to improve the downtown project or the downtown project. That's how they is there any provision for that in Pendleton? Yeah, so the whole town, the whole town is, uh, what's the right term? Economic like? development area. Economic development area, where we can spend the money. In some communities, especially in the larger cities, it's only specific areas, like a downtown. Here, it's the whole town, including the downtown and everything else. So how do you get system work? Because of what? How about the downtown? So we we've been spending on I mean, what kind of funding do you have? Or what kind of provision? Or what do you have? So we have our budget, and within that budget, we do specify what the projects are. Um, some of the money recently has been used for helping out to expand for storm sewer. Um, we plan on using it for the depot park mock improvements. Um, Business park trail, right? So it'll come to the downtown. So there's no funding for the local buildings, downtown buildings, like if we find a city. Well, okay, so we, when I took over as town manager about four and a half years ago, we had a more basic problem to solve, and that was the downtown was getting, getting to flood. And so I hate to put money into buildings and nobody else wanted to put, put money into their own private buildings until the flooding was stopped. So we're starting to get that under control, right? So you gotta take care of the basics first. Um, there is some money that, as you're aware of, that comes from a different source for downtown businesses for the facade, the 50-50 grant. Pretty sure Hannah Denise is talking to you about that. Okay. I think Scott makes a good point, as do you. Um, we need to get the infrastructure in place before we can spend money on beautifying the place. And he's right. Several of our homes down through 
Main Street there flooded every time it rained. The entire back, our entire backyard flooded right up to the house. They put a new storm sewer in, no more flooding. And then they're bringing it this way. So once we get all that taken care of, perhaps we can use some tip dollars to help renovate some of the downtown buildings. But until you stop the flooding, there's no point in renovating the building. with tip dollars. There are, as Denise said, there are other dollars. The HPC has that fund that I think you've applied for that before, haven't you? I believe you did, because I was on the HPC for a while. Anything else from the floor? All right. Well, in that case, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. I got a motion and a second. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Got it. Thank you all very much. <laughs>